political leaders will never take risks if the people do not push them to take some risks. To have the opportunity to interact with people from the Middle East, from Israel and Palestine on a human level is exactly what I think the world needs. Well, let's, let's talk, let's have a conversation now, huh? When we start with people to people relations, it will help. You know, human relations and relationships are so important. In 1998, Gainesville, Florida started a three-way sister city program with the cities of Kalkilia and Kvarsaba and Gainesville. This program, we feel, is different. You know, our goal is to pair every Israeli and Palestinian city with a U.S. city in a three-way relationship. This is a great initiative. I think the idea is great, really. A good platform for good relationship. Absolutely. We want this kind of, you know, of relation to go ahead. We need bridges of love and understanding. I think that we can be a bridge. We would like to have uh, cooperation. It will provide us with an ample opportunity to, to really begin to move in the direction of sustainable climate. Let's do the 50-50-50. We'll work on that, inshallah. What we're here to do is make personal relationships first. And I'm really excited about having the luminaries here. Be the change that you want to see in the world Like Gandhi live for peace Aspire to peace So I'm gonna fight for the beliefs Like Martin Luther King Aspire to peace in 1982, the city of Gainesville initiated the first U.S.-Soviet sister city program. At that time, it was the height of the Cold War. There was no conversations or relationships between ordinary American and Soviet people. And it was a very dangerous time, 50,000 nuclear weapons, threats of using them, and people were scared. And so we started this sister city program. We took delegations there. Other cities began contacting us. After a few years, we were able to connect 200 U.S. and Soviet cities. And then President Reagan went on television and said, this is what we need, more sister city programs. Enduring peace requires openness, honest communications, and opportunities for our peoples to get to know one another directly. We're proposing the broadest people-to-people -people exchanges in the history of American-Soviet relations. People-to-people -people contacts can build genuine constituencies for peace in both countries. After all, people don't start wars. Governments do. So we're at a critical point here in our project. If, if they won't even listen, how can there be any hope? The wall that we came across there was much higher and much thicker than any physical wall that I've seen here. It's so close, but mentally it's very far for us. For Keep me. asking questions, searching for answers, trying to find ways we can just Brighton's heal. Home, so flowers of forgiveness. We are under occupation. A lot of people died. We can't change this. this boring. People are starving. How many children have to be killed? Maybe the world is just a reflection of how I feel. How do we stop the suffering of regular people? The world is just a reflection of how I feel. I don't want to get emotional. Maybe the world is just a reflection of how I feel. All the people Maybe want the world. world is just a reflection of how I feel. I feel. I believe we can do it together. That's it, people to people. Change is going to occur here and it's going to start with the young people. They are capable of creating peace and change in the world. You know, this trip has opened up my eyes. This time I have tears of joy. Waiting is not an option anymore. We need to get these people together. And not accept the status quo. We're going to give it everything we've got. When the leaders get stuck, and they're no longer able to effectively lead, that's when the people lead.